Dr. Fizz, theoretical physics, what does it all mean, these eigenstates, with respect to arbitrary directions? So here we have a direction defined along this R, and that is theta with respect to the z-axis and phi with respect to the x-axis, and these are the spin up and spin down eigenstates for that direction. How do we understand what this means? Well, you consider easy cases. Whenever this happens in physics or mathematics, you pick easy cases. You pick limiting cases. So how about when theta is equal to zero? That's a nice friendly axis, the z-axis. If theta equals zero, then the cosine of zero is one. The sine of zero is zero. So I get here zero, one, and one, zero. In other words, this is spin up along the z-axis and this is spin down along the z-axis. And I'm familiar with that. I says, yeah, that's right, spin up and spin down. Well, what happens if we go to, say, the x-axis? Let's pick theta to be 90 degrees to get to the xy plane and then let's close this angle shut by letting phi equal zero. So if theta equals 90, then we have cosine of 45 sine of 45, sine 45, cosine of 45, and if phi equals zero, this goes away, this exponential. So I have all these are the same. They're all square root of two over two. So I'm going to write that as one over square root of two. And this is the result. Let's focus our attention on the spin up with rel relative to the x-axis. This is spin up, but now I can begin to understand what this means because I see that this can be written as a sum of two spinners, one over square root of two, spin up, spin down, and then, hey, spin up, spin down. Wait a minute. That's the logic for the z-axis. You see the z-axis spin up, the sp z-axis spin down. So I see that if I am spin up along the x-axis, and if it's the x-axis, and this is the eigenstate, this is a spin-up for the x-axis. This is your x-axis spin-up state. This is it. But for the experimenter who is the z-axis experimenter, looking from the z-perspective, we have written the x-axis spin-up as a superposition of the spin-up, spin-down states for the z-axis. So that is telling us that the person along the z-axis will measure spin up half the time since this is your coefficient c1 is 1 over square root of 2 and it's real so c1 squared is your probability for this state uh, and the probability here for this state is your c squared is 1 half so 1 half probability here 1 half probability there I separated out the c1 and the c2 so I can see specifically the two states and their probability so then you can interpret it very easily 1 half spin up plus one and here's this is one half spin down in your experiment. What about picking another angle? How about going upside down here? Let's go 180. If we go 180 then the cosine of 180 over 2 is cosine of 90 that will give 0 and the cosine of 90 is 1 and I have this exponential term here that goes along and I can look at this and say well this is my spin up if I'm if I'm standing on my head this is the spin up for me that's what is going to be spin up for me that's my eigenstate but let's express this in terms of the 1001 for the z axis so for the negative z axis this is spin up but in terms of the regular z axis someone will see me with zero degree probability zero probability zero probability that you have spin up and the probability for spin down is c2 star c2 which will be one in other words i am upside down along the z-axis but I, i'm holding an arrow spin in up in my direction but when the z language kicks in the z experimenter says hey you're upside down i'm seeing you as 100 percent spin down. So that is neat to see that and then if you go 360 here's another surprise if you go 360 the angle 360 divided by 2 is cosine of 180 that's a negative one and the sine of 180 is 0 so you get the same physics if you go 360 
this is back to the z-axis, so the probability that we're spin up here is c1 star c1, which is 1, but that's a little weird that you got that minus 1 showing up, even though the physics is the same. And Feynman comes along and challenges us to do the waiter uh, problem where you hold the tray. Don't do this with the real tray and glasses. Don't even do it with a book. Just You just hold your hand out flat and then try rotating your hand around so that when you rotate your hand around, you're twisted when you go 1 360. And then keep rotating again to untwist yourself and that will demonstrate that indeed you have to go 2 times 360 to straighten yourself out. Feynman's intuition, the Feynman trick to help us gain insight into the strange behavior of spinners.